Happy Crockin' Monday, y'all. It's our Crockin' anniversary, and we are celebrating by bringing y'all four new yummy desserts to try out. They're all different flavors and tastes, and we hope you enjoy them as much as we do. We're gonna start off with a new treat. We already have our peanut clusters, but this is called This and That Tasty Treats, because basically we're just throwing in some of this, some of that, and it's a lot of goodness. So <laughs> we have one block of the, um, one package of the chocolate almond bark mm -hmm. and one block of the vanilla almond bark. And you're just going to get those. So good. Some people have trouble finding the almond bark. It comes in um, big rectangular packages and in your baking aisle. It's usually with the rest of the chocolate that you can Sometimes find. Sometimes it's called um, melting like yeah, candy. candy coating mm -hmm. chocolate. We're going to do six ounces of macadamia nut baking pieces. And then we're going to do two cups of um, just the baking chips. If you have butterscotch on hand, white chocolate, um, semi-sweet milk chocolate, whatever you want to use. I've done a mixture. mixture. You can do all one kind, but I did some chocolate and some white chocolate. The butterscotch is really good, too. Yes. That was the first time I made them, I made it with that. It's really yummy. And then the four-ounce block of the Baker's German chocolate. It's in a green box. And this doesn't have to be mixed up. It will all melt down and be fine. Now the last ingredients I have over here, I'm going to wait until the end. Mm -hmm. It's a cup of crushed up pretzels. Whatever's in the bottom of your bag works. It, we use the stick pretzels, just chopped them up. I have half a cup of coconut. And then I've added about a teaspoon of sea salt. If you don't want the salty kick to it, then you can leave that out, but it is pretty yummy. So you're gonna cover this, you're gonna cook it on low for about three hours and once that's melted, I actually have a melted one so I can show you the last step. You're going to mix up the ingredients in there, which I've already done. And you're gonna get that chocolate nice and stirred up with the nuts. Smells good. So, then you're going to add all of these ingredients at the very end. And mix it up. I love the different textures in here, the crunchy, the mm -hmm. coconut, and then the well, I salt. I like the salt with the sweet. That's mm -hmm. nice. Gives it a different touch. Also, when you, um, now you're going to dollop these out, and when you dollop, you'll want to just use a nonstick surface. We use wax, paper, foil. Right now we have um, just a little nonstick uh, cutting, cutting board. board. Yeah. So. We're going to so. dollop a few out just to show you and, you know, I have a big island so I um, let mine cool but Jenna likes to put hers on cookie sheets with wax paper and stick it in the fridge and let them harden up faster. Because I'm usually in a hurry and I'm wanting to take these to someone. They're a great gift, great mm -hmm. party treat to take so I'm usually running out the door so I throw them in the freezer to cut down that time. Do you want to dollop them out? Yeah, sure. Now you can also sprinkle... Um, some coconut on top and that would liven them up a little bit. Yes, and you can make these at whatever size you would like. It is perfectly fine to make them smaller if you're feeding a crowd. It's going um, to make a ton yes. of treats. So, and you just continue to dollop. And then we'll sprinkle some coconut. We'll Yummy! Touch. And we've got the final product over there. Yeah. These that. are some finished product. We have the coconut drizzled and just nice little bite-sized treats. Share them with your friends. Now I'm going to walk you through the pineapple upside down cake. We've actually taken the whole cake and flipped it out and here's the final product. We're, um, it's so pretty. Yes, I love it. My husband, that is probably his favorite cake, so we're definitely going to have to yeah, Stanton was make pumped. that for him. Yeah. Okay, so the first steps would be to, you want to spray your slow cooker okay. and you're going to use Baker's Joy. Um, Pam grill uh, baking spray. It will have flour in it and that uh -huh. really helps. Yes, that helps get this cake out. 
And if you pair that with a non-stick crock, that's going to help a lot with your desserts if you want to get it out very nicely like this. Yeah, that's a double bonus. So, Okay, so then I've got some brown sugar. And Jenna, I'm just going to let, let you sprinkle that. Just down in there uh -huh. just to cover it? Yeah. Just kind of spread it around. Yeah. Just kind of break it up and just you just want a, a small layer, very thin layer to cover the bottom of your slow cooker. Okay. Okay, Talk for the next um, steps we're going to have, I've got one box here of pineapple supreme cake, whatever brand you like. Now, according to the package directions, you're going to add the ingredients that it says. So just prepare the mix, just like it says. You're going to add oil, eggs, and then um, it usually calls for water, and every time it calls for water, I substitute milk. Keeps the cake really moist. So that's the only difference in the box directions that you're going to be making? Yeah, and I do this with every cake I make. Anytime it says water. I don't do it with brownies, but cakes I do. So I've just found that the cakes just stay moist so, for so much longer than with water. So we'll get this good and mixed up. I'm just using a spoon today. Most of the time I would use a little hand mixer to get this mixed up or my large mixer. but. Okay, so the next step, you're going to take one can of pineapple rings and you're going to place these right on the bottom over that brown sugar. And you will use the whole can. They might have to overlap a little uh -huh. on some. But yeah, what I like to do is just down. do the edges first. That way we can kind of see. Perfect. And then you will have a little, oh, you'll have quite a bit of juice in that, but just use just a little bit, I'd say about a fourth of a cup, and just drizzle it right over. Because the pineapple slices have juice in them too, so. Okay, then you're going to take your cherries and just insert them right in the middle. That's if I can find the cherries, because my little Gracie absolutely loves these. Right, this might not be a step to let your kids help you with because then yeah, she would eat them all. Yes. So. Kids think they're a great treat. That's so pretty. I know. I love that it completely comes out of the I know. Crock. So, yeah, and you can it's not you can slice it just like a cake. Right. A lot of the cakes we make they're the ooey gooey, you have to spoon them out mm -hmm. and and those are pretty delicious, but it's also fun to have one that will come out and be a firm um, full cake. All right, I've got my batter good and mixed, and we'll just pour it right over. Looks really good. Yes. It's, and I love this because, you know, with a lot of cakes, you have to prepare icing to go along with them and or this have one some, mm, like something a cool yeah whip or an ice cream yeah or and this you can just serve just like that cool. so you're going to cover this one and cook it on high for about two to three hours depending on how your crock cooks if it cooks too hot you know i would i wouldn't do it the full three hours because it it will burn on the edges when it's done you know your your test when your cake is done is to insert a toothpick and when it comes out clean it's all the way done so when it is done i would remove the lid and remove the crock from the base right. and let it cool for about 10 to 20 minutes and then i just took my cake stand and put it over and just flipped it right out yeah, and i haven't done anything else yeah whatever, whatever whatever mm -hmm. you want to use and it will drop from down here to the cookie sheet or whatever. Don't worry right. about having to get your hand down in there or anything. Yeah.
All right, y'all, we have another fruity one coming your way. Right behind Pineapple Upside Down Cake, we're going to show you how we make Lazy Lemon Delight. It is almost a cross between like a lemon bar and a, like a lemony mm -hmm. cheesecake. Yeah. So, it's right up my alley, I love lemon. So, there is a mix for lemon bars called Supreme Bars. It's the lemon flavor. And in that box, there will be a batter mix mm -hmm. packet and a crust mix. You put both packages down in here, down in your mixing bowl. I have two eggs. I have half a cup of applesauce. This also keeps a cake moist, adding applesauce to it. It's if you if you need to stay away from dairy. Or the oil, you can mm -hmm. add some applesauce. And then half a cup of water also. And then right here is um, 12 ounces of whipped cream cheese. It's going to come in a little tub. And it just yeah. makes mixing a little mm -hmm. easier than um, the cube, the bar. It's located over with the cream cheese, just in a tub, not the package. Right. So I'm going to get that in there, and I'm going to mix this up. If y'all haven't noticed, we are crocking in our new crocking girl studio. Yes, we absolutely love it. What a! Is there a better way to break it in besides? I know desserts, some desserts. Eating desserts all day. Okay. So. While she's mixing, I'm going to spray the slow cooker for her. Once again, using the um, spray that has the flour yes. in it. And then we have a two, you're going to need two cans of the crescent rolls for this recipe. One this of them. This is one right unroll here. Unroll it, press it down flat in the bottom of the slow cooker. And you can just press it down if it breaks. Just Press it down to where the bottom is fully covered, and if it has to go up on the edges a little bit, that's fine. Yeah, and your seams, when it cooks, it's going to all cook together, right. so. We are using oval for this one. We are using nonstick, and it is about a six to seven quart slow cooker. I smell the lemon. No. It smells so good. We are, my family is a big fan of lemon. We love lemon right and i didn't ice box cake sometimes lemon bars can take lemon a little bars. while so this is a good alternative all right so i've got this mixed up and i might use a hand mixer to get it a little smoother but it's going to cook through fine that cream cheese makes it very smooth so now i'm just going to pour this directly on top of the crescent rolls I'm loving doing desserts in my slow cooker. Well, they're just so easy. I mean, it's still so warm here in Texas, and I do not want my oven to heat up my house. And I can easily put this on and go run just a few errands or go play outside with the kids or, you know. Well, and when I'm baking, if I leave it in five minutes too long, sometimes it's, that ruins it. And yes. sometimes with kids especially, I have things come up where I maybe not have that extra five minutes to run away. Right. So, then I have the other can of crescent rolls and I'm, you're just going to slice it um, off the roll. And I have some strips here, if you'll help me out in a minute. Sure. Nicole. We're just going to yeah. lay it over. Kind of like you would a pie, but it doesn't have to be very fancy just because it's Your going to um, all bake together. So, you're just going to lay that down in strips just across until you've used the whole uh, can of crescent rolls. Just different directions. So it actually looks kind of like a pie. Yeah, but when you're, you can, it'll all cook together. So if it starts doing that and you wonder if it's not cooking right, it is. Don't be alarmed. You would normally continue to cut this, but I don't think I can sit here no, and look I at this want a bite. without tasting it. So hand one over. Cheers to our, our cheers to our studio. Yeah. Now, I, if you notice, I did sprinkle some powdered sugar over the top makes it a little prettier. This is really good warm, but it's also warm. great if mm -hmm. you keep it refrigerated. 
So I hope y'all enjoy this one as much as we are. Okay, we're gonna bring y'all our final dessert. I'm about to walk you through. Um, this recipe is actually um, one of the very first recipes I ever cooked. So it's we're called- We're back to chocolate. We're Your back to love. chocolate. Yes, my absolute favorite. Mud pie is what we call this. Um, I make this all the time when I'm craving something chocolate. It's super simple. I usually have the ingredients on hand. And so I'm gonna walk you through it. It is one cup of sugar, a third cup of flour, a third cup of cocoa, a stick of butter or margarine, whichever you have, doesn't matter, I've used both, a teaspoon of vanilla. Gotta let the vanilla Got a little extra in there. Yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> A pinch of salt, two eggs, I'm telling you, simple. And we'll get this good and mixed. You don't have to worry about having a mix or anything for no, this one. No, uh -uh, just with a, yeah, and a wooden spoon, that's all you need. So, actually my um, brother makes this all the time, he's in college, and um, we, we both love chocolate, so. That good mixed up. Jenna, I'm gonna have you spray the slow cooker for me. Okay. Now, we add pecans to this. You've heard me say it in the past. I'm a big pecan fan. We use pecans with almost anything that we bake. One to two cups of pecans. I lean more on the two cup. Uh oh. And so this, this isn't making this like is a ton easy. of batter. No, so it's, it's not. Thin. Me, yeah, it's pretty thin. It's it's gonna be gooey, but um, firm. You can also you, cut you'll it. You'll so be able to cut it. In fact, you, I was able to just take it right out of the slow cooker and cut it. I used to bake this all the time in a pie plate, and just converted it to the slow cooker. And it turned out super yummy. And I think if you want to make more, if you would like it a little thicker, you can definitely double the batter. Or this recipe would probably still work great in a round slow oh, cooker because yes. it'll just make it a little yes. thicker. Yes. So I'll get this in there. Now, funny story about this is I was pregnant with my first child, went to Red Lobster love their fudge overboard. Like, it's absolutely probably my favorite dessert ever. Was pregnant, keep in mind. Went to order the fudge overboard and the waitress said, um, we no longer make that. Pregnancy mixed with no chocolate, not a good story. So I was so bummed. I started crying in the restaurant. The lady was looking at me. Anyway, my brother, we were eating with my family and we got home and my brother made me the mud pie and he, he said, didn't want you crying this anymore. is your fudge overboard. This is as close as we can get to it. And so it tastes, I serve it with ice cream and then I top, top with it with chocolate. nuts. More chocolate and more nuts. And more nuts. And I've got my fudge overboard. So how long we cook it for? Cover, cook on high for about two hours. Again, toothpick inserted in the middle. You're good to go. Good. It will be a little gummy, but once you remove it and let it cool for a little bit, um, it's going to harden up some and, and firm up. And, and then, then you're you then you're able. Too, you can skip it out. Yes. It if you want. And in so. the spirit of tasting, I really think we should. Give this one a fair well, try and definitely. taste it too. Uh-huh. I mean, it can be almost like a brownie, but it's like a gooey, gooey. It's a little gooey. gooier. Mm-hmm. So, we hope y'all have enjoyed the recipes. We are so excited to be doing this. We've we had a love. wild year. Yes. A crazy year crocking, but we couldn't have done it without our family, our friends, 
And our whole Crockin, Crockin team helps us do what we do on a weekly basis. And our wonderful Crockin community, we hope you have a blessed Monday. Happy Crockin, y'all. Enjoy these desserts, and we're going to go make us a dentist appointment, right? <laughs> yeah.